Hello and welcome back to the one, the only Welsh Watch podcast. This is episode three. And if you don't know, it's all about Welsh international football. I'm your host, Ben Thomas. I'm joined with Lee. Hello, everyone. Tom. Hiya. Jack. Hello. And Ben. Hi. Obviously, over the last 48 hours, there's been quite a lot of controversy revolving around Ryan Giggs, the Welsh manager. At this current time, we don't know all the facts, so we're not going to make any comments on it. But I will just read out a FAW statement that they have made in the last few hours. It reads, The Football Association of Wales and Ryan Giggs have mutually agreed that he will not be involved in the upcoming international camp. So this news means that he will not be involved in the upcoming friendlies against USA, Ireland and Finland. There is another statement from an official spokesperson at the FAW on Ryan Giggs. It says, the FAW is aware of an alleged incident involving the men's national team manager, Ryan Giggs. The FAW will be making no further comments at this current time. So we're not going to talk about this as we don't know the full facts, but I'm sure we'll talk about it on a further podcast coming up. Once that's all done, let's get straight into it. Let's go straight on to the Welsh Watch segment. So this is all about the players who have played over the last week and have impressed us. And we'll just see what happens. So first of all, let's talk about Hibernian's Christian Deutsch. He's not, he hasn't played for Wales much yet, but he's impressing in Scotland. On Saturday, he played 90 minutes against Hearts. They lost 2-1, but he impressed by scoring a bullet header. Personally, I think he should get his chance in the squad in the upcoming games, as he is impressing. And we've got... We haven't got many options up front. Obviously, we have Kiefer Moore, Robson Carnu, although he is injured. And you can put someone else up front, but they just haven't got that power that others bring. So, Lee, I'll come straight to you about Chris Deutsch. What do you think? Obviously, he's someone that splits the opinions of the fans. And I have seen a lot on social media about they should be bringing him in. But what do you think? I think he should definitely be on the plane to the Euros. Like you said, you don't have many options up front. Only Kiefer Moore and Robson Carnu. But... Looking at his stats, he is a consistent goal scorer. I think that's what you're going to need going into a major tournament. So why not take the gamble? As I said with uh, Hedges last week, why not? It's a chance for him to show off on the biggest stage. It seems to be as if the players in the Scottish League are impressive. What do you think, Tom? Do you reckon he should be on the plane? Yeah, I think, obviously, as we spoke about in the last couple of weeks, we don't really have that many striker options in the squad. Obviously, you've got Kiefer and then... Hal Robson Carnu, but he's out injured at the moment. Um, Sam Vokes is another one, but he's not been playing that much. And Doiji is someone that's got a proven goal scoring record um, 20 goals in 50 games for Hibs in the last season and a half. And he's been tearing up in the lower leagues of England as well before he made the move up to Scotland. So I'm just honestly surprised that he's not been included in a squad before now. But yeah, for me, definitely worth a look. So, Jack, I'm going to come to you for this one. So, for the next three friendlies that we have, although Ryan Giggs is not going to be involved, do you think we should stay with the same team just to keep that squad together? Or would you bring Christian Deutsch and throw a new man into the squad, even though the main manager isn't there at the time? No, i definitely chuck in Deutsch, uh, especially for these games coming up. I don't see why not. Like, as a boy said, like, there's not much... Um, we don't have many strikers up top, so why not bring in someone new? Maybe like they can fit into the system a lot better than others. But yeah, like Tom said, he's had a fair few goals um, for himself. So, I mean, I, I don't see why not. I'd like to see it, definitely. I'd bring him in. Ben, obviously he plays in Scotland. Do you think that's a disadvantage? It's obviously not as competitive of a league, if you look at it in that way, compared to the Championship or the Premier League, where a lot of the boys play. Do you think that will give an impact or do you think he should go anyway? Well, we, we kind of like touched upon this last week when we talked about Ryan Hedges. I think if any player is doing well enough to make, like they're clearly standing at the moment, which Deutsch is, then give him a chance. Whether I think he'll play in the upcoming friendlies, I'm not sure because, right, so we've got Robert Page coming in. He's our assistant. He's going to be taking over for the three games. If I was him... Obviously, you want to try things, but you're not the main manager. You're not going to be working with the players. So I think if I was him personally, 
I would think about just keeping it simple with the squad. He might bring him in because let's be honest, he's scoring. Why wouldn't you want to score it in the squad? But like, if I was him, you'd maybe think of it like, I don't want to try out the new players now because I'm not the official manager. So maybe he'll just keep it simple and just go with the squad we had last time. But Deutsch is a good enough player to make the squad. So if he's if he is, then no one's going to be disappointed with it. Personally, I think he should be in the squad. He's got experience. He brings a bag load of goals. And it's something different that we don't have. We only have Kiefer Moore up top at the moment as Robson Carney's out. And I don't see why we shouldn't bring him in for the next few friendlies. But as the squad announcement's coming up in the next few days, we'll see what happens there. And we might have Christian Deutsch in the Wales squad. Right, we'll move on to the next player. So, Johnny Williams. He played on Saturday. Uh, he played 71 minutes against Portsmouth. So a very difficult team to play away at Fratton Park. They won 2-0, but he scored a tap-in. It was a tap-in, yes, but it was the run that created the goal. He ran from the edge of the box, got into a dangerous position and put them ahead. So he's obviously scored against Bulgaria and it shows that he has got that danger in the box. But what do you think? It's obviously a competitive midfield. What do you think about Johnny Williams in the next few squads? Ben, I'll go straight to you on this one. Yeah, I love Johnny Williams. I, I don't know why. I think he's, he was part of the Euro 2016 squad, so I think all Wales fans love him. So he, you know, he didn't play every game, but he was still part of the squad. He did play in some of them, but I, I love him. I think I don't know if he's... He's still younger than everyone seems to expect. I'm pretty sure he's only like 28, which everyone thinks he's older. But no, I think he, he, he makes the squad for me. He's good enough. I don't think he'll be playing every game if, if you know, he might miss some games, but he makes the squad for me. Lee, what do you think about um, Johnny Williams? Obviously, should he be on the plane? What do you think? I, I'm going to be controversial, and I don't think he should be on the plane. Ooh. Yeah. Go on. So, why is that? What do you think? Uh, mainly because of his goal record. He's an attacking midfielder. That's the position he plays in. Like you said, he gets into the box. If you look in at his goal record, he's just got one goal for Wales. He's got... Three goals in the championship. Like, is that really good enough? In a major tournament, you're going to need goals from your midfielder. Yes, you may get assists, but you want goals. That's that's what determines a game. And I don't think he's going to get much, considering his record. So, yeah, I don't think he should be on the plane. I think he should gamble on someone else. For instance, like Hedges or Deutsch, like we just mentioned. So, yeah. Controversial, but that's my opinion. Tom, do you think that experience is needed, though? Obviously, you look at the mid Wales midfield, and at the moment, he's very young. I mean, obviously, you have Aaron Ramsey, and you have a few experienced players. You have Joe Allen as well, who will be in the squad most likely. But do you think an extra bit of experience is needed with Jolly Williams? Well, obviously, experience is always helpful. And I mean, you look at the team that lined up against England in the recent friendly, and um, Apart from Wayne Hennessy in goal, I think the most cap player in the starting lineup was uh, Ethan Ampadu, who's only got like 20 caps to his name. And like, if you then have that situation in a tournament where Bale's unavailable and Ramsey's unavailable, you need experienced players to guide these young players through that. So for me, he's definitely someone that's involved in the squad, but I don't see him getting that much game time if everyone's fit. Because obviously you got the likes of David Brooks, Harry Wilson, who could all be vying for that similar sort of position. So, yeah, for me, he's in the squad, but not a starter. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he's got a great goal against Bulgaria in the most recent Nations League games. What do you think, Jack? Do you reckon he should be on the plane? Do you reckon he should be in the Euro squad? Um, yeah, I, I'm similar to Tom, really. Like, I think he should have a chance on the bench, as bringing experience off bench is a lot better than that. A youngster, in my opinion, and like Lee was saying with his record for Wales, but I think with recent form, I'd prefer to look at that instead of previous tournaments. So I think they should definitely keep him in the squad, um, give him some game time. Obviously, I don't think he'd get he'd be on the starting eleven, but no, definitely keep him on the bench. Bit of experience, and yeah, any injuries, you know, we could come on and could make a difference. Definitely. So just a quick two mentions in this segment. First of all, I'm going to talk about Gareth Bale. Obviously, he scored his first Premier League goal in seven years. He came on in the 70th minute and scored in the 73rd. So, an instant impact in a 2-1 win over Brighton. And, boys, I'm sure you're happy about that. 
buzzing. Yeah. Is Gareth Bale with his long, beautiful locks taking you to the Premier League champions? Exactly. Let's hope so. Of course he is. The next player I'm just going to briefly mention is Connor Roberts. He played the blinder against Stoke and Blackburn and probably should have had a few assists. And should he be over Neko Williams or not? What do you think? Quick one. Still Neko for me. Lee? Same, still Neko. Ben? I think you all mean Nico. Neko's a weird way of calling him, but yeah, I like Nico and Williams. <laughs> I prefer Neko. Uh, Jack? Yeah, I go with Neko as well. Right, so next segment, we're just going to talk about the future focus. And Lee, I'm going to put this straight on to you, as I know this is your segment for the week. So I got the opportunity the other day to interview Wales Women's International, Lily Wooden. If anyone didn't know, Lily made her debut for Wales last week against the Faroe Islands, and she actually scored in a 4-0 victory. So yeah, I was so happy to get this opportunity, and yeah, I hope you like the interview. The, interview, the full interview will be uploaded on the YouTube channel as well. So what you'll see will be a 10-minute uh, clip from it. So yeah, hope you enjoy. I'm Lily Woodham. I'm 20 years old. I play for Reading Women Football Club and I'm a Welsh international. Um, prefer to play left back or left wing, but anyway, really, yeah. <laughs> Lily Woodham of Reading. Yeah, and exciting changes as well. Great to see the like of Lily Woodham get a new chance today. You know, she's a, a very talented youngster. Walters in the middle. She's not the only one. It goes over Walters' head, and it is 4 0. And Lily Woodham heads past the goalkeeper with such ease. Fantastic cross. And what a great moment that is for Lily Woodham. Hello everyone, my name is Lee Clare and today I'm delighted to be joined by Reading and Wales International, Lily Woodham. Hi Lily, Hello. how are you? I'm good, thank you, all fine. Uh, good, so now Lily, I've got to start off by congratulating you on your first cap for Wales. Thank you. <laughs> so if anyone didn't know, uh, Lily made her international debut against the Faroe Islands one week ago on October the 22nd. Uh, not only that, but Lily, in fact, scored on her debut in a 4-0 victory. Now, that's amazing to see. So, what was that moment like for you, scoring for your country on your debut? It must be special, right? Yeah. It was incredible when, when Jane said to kind of go and get warm and get yourself ready, you're, you're coming on kind of thing. I, I couldn't believe it. It was a mix of, like, nerves, excitement. I didn't... I knew my job, I knew my role, I knew I could do it. But yeah, going on for my, to play for my country was a dream really come true. And then as the ball hit the back of the net, I kind of didn't know, you know what, what to do really. Everything kind of stopped for a second. Um, I went past the keeper and I just turned around and all the girls came over and celebrated with me. And the feeling of, of that was, I don't know if I, I don't know if I could top it. <laughs> I'm still waiting for, that's probably the best feeling I've had in, in terms of football in my career so far. But yeah, it was, it was a dream come true, really. Oh, good. So tell us more about your goal. Obviously, you were, break, you were brought on by uh, Jane Ludlow on 60 minutes. You are already three mm -hmm. minutes time. And then six minutes later, you virtually scored your first touch. Um, I know. So um, did you expect to be in the box at the time? So, no, the girls had obviously done really well to score the three beforehand. I think it was Tash and Hells got two as well. So, they were really good goals. So, it was a good game to come on and, like, get involved with. So, when I found myself in the box, I thought... And the ball was... Usually, I'm not great at headers. It's not really my forte. But as soon as Rowie, I think it was, put a really good ball in the box, I just kind of knew in that moment if I ducked or missed... <laughs> It was going to be kind of, Lil, what are you doing? So I just had to go with it. The balls were really hard as well, weirdly. So <laughs> to put my head on it, it was, it just had to go for it, went for it. And it was a, it was a lovely cross. So I just kind of had to direct it. And yeah, finding myself between the defenders and, and scoring was, was incredible, really. Yeah. Would you say it's your best moment ever? Yeah, in my career so far. I know, obviously, signing pro was up there as well. Um, but yeah, to play for my country even is is amazing. To follow in the footsteps that 
the likes of Jess, Tash, Rowey, ha like all the girls at Reading, Sophie Ingall um, and Helen Moore, all the players that are so senior and so, so good. Um, yeah, it was the best feeling to come on and, and score. Oh, that's good. So uh, let's step back and uh, look back on your career so far. So how did you get into football? Like, when did it click to you that you wanted to become a professional footballer? So from a very young age, probably from the around just seven, I used to play at the back garden with, with actually my dad and my brother. Um, and they used to just kick balls at me and, and his friend, I just used to have to go and go on and just be a bounce board, really, just hit it off me. But um, yeah, from then, really, I found, found my love for the game and I started playing for the boys and I just really enjoyed like having the ball on my feet and just enjoyed having that time with, with the team. I quite enjoy being in that team environment and yeah, playing football was just everything for me and I kind of then went from the boys to obviously had to transition into a girls team then which was actually Cardiff City ladies at the time um, and they were amazing playing for them was was really good and that's where I kind of developed into okay now this is something I, I really want to do as as a dream of mine um, obviously the older girls were playing were playing so I think you probably would have been semi-pro then so I used to go when I moved to Bristol eventually from Cardiff City I um I went to watch, I can remember, Tash has everyone, Lauren Dykes, um, it was Bristol in the Champions League against Barcelona, and it was at Ashton Gate. And I remember going and thinking, this could be me one day, this could be something that I do as a job, or I do as something I love waking up to every day. Um, and yeah, as I kind of got older, I realised if I really wanted it and worked as hard as I could, I, I could get somewhere with it kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I've always, from seven onwards, I've always wanted this to be my job and something that I, I can do every day. Nice. So uh, you mentioned you signed for Bristol City in around 2017, um, mm -hmm. the WSL at the time. Um, what was that like for you, someone entering the biggest leagues, someone so young? Oh, yeah, I can remember, actually, my, my first training session with them, um, and it was just... For me, it was an easy environment to go into. The Bristol girls were amazing. So to go in at a young age was, was really easy to kind of settle into. In terms of football, it was kind of that step up then. So I'd obviously been at the age groups and development. But when you get to that, that kind of, you're in the professional environment now and, and you're with senior players, you have to step it up and be able to compete at their level and kind of challenge them as well when they need you to. So... It was pretty tough because they were they were decent and it was it was a good club and for me going into it, it was all about learning and and trying to take what I could from from the older girls that were were there at the time. And then a year later, you signed for Reading um, <laughs> and you signed a professional contract. What was that like? Um, did it hit you then that you were like officially a professional footballer at the time? Yeah, it, it's crazy because. That's something that I'd been working towards my whole my whole life. Really, I'd sacrificed a lot to to go to training sessions, to get to games. My mum, my family did a lot for me in the time I was reaching that goal. So when I actually, when Kelly said like we're going to offer you a contract this year, you've done really well. It was it didn't sink in for a while. I was buzzing. Um, so my family and stuff came up, and we were there for like the signing and stuff. So. When I left, I was like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, I'm, I've not achieved everything I want to because I've still got a long way, but this is the first step in my career in the right direction for me to go and be the best that I can be. So I just couldn't believe it, yeah. So you made a few appearances for Reading and then uh, last season you went out on loan for Charlton Athletic. Um, mm -hmm. What was that like, moving clubs again so quickly and then maybe dropping down to the championship for a season? Did you enjoy that and relish it? your time playing? Yeah, so for me, it was it was about getting that 90 minutes every weekend. So I kind of trained with Reading as well. So I still got that kind of uh, WSL1 side of stuff. But going to Charlton and stuff was amazing. I, I really enjoyed my time there. The, the staff and the girls were incredible. I settled in quite well. Um, but yeah, the championship is a really is a really tough league. There's, there's a lot of competition. Um, 
the games are the games are tough. So for me, it was that kind of exposure to to the women's game. Um, even though it was a, a league below, it was still pretty tough and hard for me. So it was enjoyable to kind of learn from actually playing. So it's completely different. I, I guess anyone would agree that playing in an actual game is different to training. So, yeah, it was really enjoyable getting the minutes I needed. And I was injured a lot, so I missed a few games with the girls. But when I did play, it was it was that feeling of, OK, I've got a job to do today. I need We need to get the three points. We need to do everything we can to win this game. So having that feeling on waking up on a Sunday as well was, was incredible. That's what every footballer kind of wants, I think, yeah. So when you came back to Reading, um, did you feel you came back a better player? Yeah, I feel like the experience and kind of the confidence I got from playing and knowing my level and where I was at in myself, uh, going back into Reading was was really enjoyable because I had, I think it's more for me that that is the confidence side. So when I know I can do things or, or I have the ability and more confidence in my own abilities I kind of relish a bit more um so going back in and stuff and it was nice to show Kel and obviously all the coaching stuff that I had improved and I had come a longer way from the player they first signed um but yeah obviously then we had Covid so that was pretty tough the lockdown and then yeah we're back in now so I'm really enjoying it. Let's look forward um what are your plans ahead? You've got a bright career ahead of you uh, any personal goals you want to achieve? Uh, yeah, I think for me now, it's kind of, I'm obviously 20, so I'm still pretty young, but it's at that age where I'm kind of looking to start and play 90 minutes for the club. So I need to keep working hard and competing. Um, in the next, I'd say, five years or so, hopefully I've solidified my place in, in a WSL1 club and I'm playing and I'm obviously um, playing for my country is obviously also a massive thing for me. I need to be working hard to at my club to for Jane to recognise and be able to pick me and stuff as well. So those two sides of it are, are really big for me. And then personally I kind of I kind of want to keep being a like how I looked up to the players that I did, kind of that player that if girls work hard and they want to become a professional footballer, they know they can. So for me helping with age groups, with, with younger with younger girls to get involved and stuff is, is also a big thing for me because it's always something I've dreamed of doing and to be able to do it is, is incredible. So to help younger girls as well kind of achieve what they want to and show that if you want, you're willing to work hard for it, then you can kind of do it. Right, so I think that ends it there. Thank you so much, Elise, for talking to me. That's no problem. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure and I wish you the best of luck for the future. So, Thank you, and have fun with your degree and stuff. <laughs> Smash it. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you everyone for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> right, yes, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that interview. Uh, I want to thank Lily Woodham again for giving me the opportunity. It was great to talk to her, and I hope to speak to her again. Brilliant interview, Lee. Right, we're going to go on to the score prediction little segment here. Last weekend, it was a tough week for us. Not one score was predicted from the Cardiff QPR game, Swansea game, or Newport game. So let's hope we have a better weekend this week. Hopefully. It would be bad if we didn't. So let's talk about Cardiff. They play in the seven-side derby against Bristol City on Friday night at 6pm. Cardiff are winless in four after a 3-2 defeat to QPR on Saturday. Heartbreak in the last few seconds for some. Uh, Bristol are in 10th, winless in five on a very poor run and lost 3-1 to Norwich on Saturday. It's, both teams really need a result. For me, oh, I don't know who to go with on this game. It, both teams need a result. I think 1-1 ah, one, one draw, 1-1. One, one. Lee, what do you think? I think it's going to be a very scrappy game and I'm going to agree with you with one all. Tom? It actually hurts me to say this, but I'm going to have to back Bristol, I think. I'm going 1-0 Bristol. I'm not at all surprised I would as well. Ben? 4-2 Cardiff. 
Okay, so now we know one has got uh, next week incorrect already. Uh, Jack, what do you think? Um, nil nil, still me. Nil nil. Oh, Sky Sports, I'm yep. gonna like that one. Uh, next, Swansea versus Norwich. It's kick off at Saturday three o'clock. Swansea have now snuck into second place. They beat Blackburn two nil at home, which is a very good result. They're on eighteen points. And if only a few points off first place. So they've already had a good start to the weekend. So, and then they are playing Norwich here in fourth. Only one point behind Swansea, though. They beat Bristol 3-1 on Saturday. And it's looking to be a very good game. I am actually going to back Swansea in this one to win. I'm going to go with a Swansea 2-1 win. What do you think, Lee? I think Swansea will continue their winning run. And I'm going to go with a 1-0 victory. Tom, what do you think for this game? Uh, two all. Ben? One nil, Swansea. Jack, what do you think? Uh, one all. One all. I think simple. One all. I think Swansea would take a 1 1 against Norwich. That'd be a very good point. I think they'll take that one and go very at the top of the league. So uh, <laughs> we're going to go on to Newport County now. They are first in the league on 25 points. They're five points clear at the top, having a great season so far. They play Leighton Orient in the FA Cup first round on Saturday at 3 o'clock. In Newport's last game, they beat Harrogate 2-1, last-minute winner, and they are on absolute fire at the moment. I'm going to predict Newport to go through into the second round in a 3-0 win against 11th place Leighton Orient. What do you think, Lee? Um, I was surprised they didn't beat Harrogate by more, if I'm totally honest. But I think they'll win again, and I'm going to go with 3-1 to Newport. In fairness, they did make it a lot harder for themselves, considering Harrogate were down to 10 men before the halftime whistle blew. What do you think, Tom? Yeah, um, can't really see anything other than a Newport win here. Uh, I'm going to agree with Lee and go 3-1 Newport. Ben, what do you think? Um, 2-1 to the Orient. So another incorrect result for you this weekend, Ben. Uh, Jack, what do you think? Um, Newport win um, 2 0. Two nil. So, four out of five of us are predicting Newport to go on another incredible cut run. <laughs> Apart from Ben, which is a bit snaky if you ask me. But anyway, those are our predictions for the weekend. Hopefully, we do better than last week. But that is all we got time for on episode three of the one, the only Welsh Watch podcast. Next week, we have an interview that Ben conducted with uh, S4C commentator for the Wales Games. Dylan Ebenezer, and we'll be talking about all the other Wales players that focused and played this weekend coming up. So thank you for viewing this week's episode. If you want to see more of what we've done, go into the other videos below. I'm sure you'll be able to find them. If you have any opinions, hit us up on our social media. They'll be in the bio and link in the description, I assume. That's down to Lee. And thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Ben Thomas. I'm joined with Lee. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Tom. Thanks for listening. Ben. See ya. And Jack. Hello. Goodbye. Thank you.